Finally, an answer to the age-old question, which comes first, the chicken or the egg roll? Easy. Just eat whichever one's closest. The Sensation Salad and Filet Sandwich Meal are back at Zaxby's. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken, crispy wontons, Asian slaw, and citrus vinaigrette. And each comes with its very own egg roll. For a limited time, only at Zaxby's. Prime with fried pickles while supplies last. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It is Wake Up Warchant, probably presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Free Zaxby's going out to our winners from last week. It's in the mail, everybody. I promise. The check. Not the check. The vouchers are in the mail. Even better than cash. Golden fried hand breaded chicken. Get you some. Also, the message to Notre Dame. Get you some. Warchant.com. Sending the message of the seminal faithful all across the globe. Warchant30 is your promo code for 30 for days of access to the ultimate seminal sports source. Uh, hit the thumbs up button if you're listening to us on YouTube, you people, and uh, maybe a five star review on iTunes, and maybe we'll check out some of those reviews at a later date. But first, a triumphant Corey Clark, the the favorite son of Atlanta. Um, he's here. He's triumphant, as I said. Let's go championship. You feeling it, Dansby Swanson? How about you start apologizing a tone? For the for the, the the mean things you've said about Dansby Swanson in the past, Corey, did I say mean things about Dansby? Well, it's uh, like you know he's not he's not number one overall guy. He's not that good. He's not number one overall guy. Well, I mean he's not. He's probably the sixth ah. best hitter on the team. That's why he bats sixth. But hey, he's turned into a nice player. Looked like for a while there he was he was going to be a bust. He's not serviceable. A little bit above average. As we'll take it in that lineup. And yeah, just overall happy. Only got eight more wins to go. Um, Good I think Lord. I think they probably hit the end of the road. The Dodgers are really good. That's a rough matchup, but still, all in all, a good season. Made something out of nothing because heck, we didn't even know there was going to be a season. So the fact that they're in the NLCS for the first time since two, since Chris Ricks was a uh, redshirt freshman quarterback at Florida State. That's how long ago it was. Feel good about things. Why not us, Corey? Why not us? I, hey, I'm with Why you, man. You, the, you, other yeah. team, like I say all the time about Florida State football these days, like you're allowed to go win games you're not supposed to win. Hey, the Braves are allowed to go win a World Series, especially when nobody expects it. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, for sure. We're going to do some over-under, give away some more Zaxby's and some more T-shirts, uh, replenished our larger stock. So I think we're all good again. we got all sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. Double XL for the big boys. <laughs> so beef. We got, yeah. yeah, some beef. Yeah, so no, some chicken, some uh, extra Zach sauce on their chicken. Right. So we got that going, and uh, we'll do some of the more uh, questions. We'll, we'll, we'll finish up Renegade Express. There's a couple questions we were, were not able to get to because I did not know how to do my job and get us set up for good high audio fidelity. We constantly had to stop because I was goofing up. But you guys don't want to know about that. Uh, anyhow, hey, man, about this Notre Dame game, I just want to clarify something. Uh, somebody said something mean to me on YouTube, which was rude. Uh, don't stop doing that. But, you know, like, hey, man, the stupidest question you've ever asked, Aslan, was asking Corey, you know, uh, do you want them to play 110% in Notre Dame? Uh, you know, my, my fear was, again, you know, you, you tell these kids, let's go out there, let's shock the world, and you go out and you lose by four touchdowns, and it's like, all right, man, get off the mat again. Please, please, please. I just, this is why I'm, I'm entertained or I'm, I feel the excitement that I think, I forgot who it was, ATX Knoll maybe yesterday? But basically the reason why I'm excited for this game, Corey, long-winded way of saying it, is that I think a lot of coaching staffs across the country would go into this game with kind of, hey, man, we got nothing to lose. Let's just go out there and play. Let's, let's have some fun. And I'm not trying to, I'm not, I'm not speaking down on that. There's, you know, a lot of coaches think, like, hey, man, we need to have fun. Uh, you know, we're playing too tight. We need to just kind of relax, do what we can do. And see what happens. See what the, Let's lock the gate behind us and see what happens when we pick a fist fight. That's what Hugh Freeze would say when Ole Miss was uh, rolling. But I, I, I'm curious because it feels like when we spoke to Mike Norvell on Wednesday, and we sit here Friday as you're listening to this, like he wasn't taking that, hey, man, let's, let's just see what happens. Like he, There seems to be a clear determination from him. If you, if you judge by the way he was 
you know, talking about the way practice went, like he is expecting this team to go full out. And I mean, I don't want to say he's expecting the shock to world, man, but he's not going up there to for for any sort of moral victory or some sort of team building exercise. I really think they're going up there with all sort of guns ablazing, trying to to pull off the win. Which, yeah, you should expect, but I think there's other ways that some coaches would attack it. I'm curious to see how this works out. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any other way a head coach at Florida State should ever attack it. Um, you know, you, I don't know that you would ever go in and go like, guys, let's just keep it close. Let's, let's have, you know, let's have some, nothing to lose. You know, nothing to lose. Nobody, you can play that card. Nobody expects us to win. Let's go shock the world. But I don't, I don't think you should be like, hey, man, there's no pressure. Go out and have fun. Like, you're a Florida State football player. There is pressure. There's pressure to not get embarrassed. And every time you play a good team, you fa- you fall, you succumb to that pressure because you do get embarrassed. So I don't know, man. I, I, I would I would hate for the guy I'm paying all that money to 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 just be like, guys, let's just let's, you know, we're not gonna win this one. Let, let's let's keep some let's keep some tricks in the bag for the next game. No, man, you go all out, try to win this thing. Um, and you're not going to, but you know, try. Try your darndest. It beats the alternative, man. How I mean, if they play as well as they possibly can and play as hard as they possibly can, there's still a chance they lose this game. Obviously, but be, yeah. But if what if they but do wouldn't all it be that cool to lose see? by four touchdowns? Look, man, they're going to lose by four touchdowns anyway. Maybe if they play like if they just lost by six touchdowns to a, to a team that's I don't know might be as good as Notre Dame or close. So, I mean, look, maybe. You, I don't know if, if you do it, it happens, but at least, you know, these are building blocks. I, I mean, I guess I remember when I used to play pickup basketball, you know, me and I, I'm not an athletic looking guy. My friends weren't necessarily the most athletic looking guys. And we would play some guys that had run the court for a while and they didn't take us seriously. And then we might get up six to one. And then all of a sudden, all right, guys, let's start playing for real. Like, well, if they had been playing for, and sometimes they'd come back and beat us, sometimes they wouldn't, but I, I would think the approach is always the same. You just play as hard as possible. Because the alternative is you don't play. What, what's the excuse? Like, oh, we didn't take them seriously. We didn't give it all. We didn't give it our all. So we shouldn't feel too bad. If we'd have played our best, we'd have beaten them. How about you play your best and find out? Play your best and see where the see what ha, see what shakes out. But play your best and play hard and go up there and believe in yourself. This team, for, you know, maybe Willie thought they were going to go up there and compete against Clemson last year, but that team certainly didn't. Wouldn't you want to see this team go out there and actually believe they can compete? I'm cool with it. I'm cool. I'm, I'm advocating on behalf of it. That's why I'm, that's why I'm excited for this because I think that's the approach they're taking. Now, there's a little bit of the, hey, we're not worrying about the opponents. It's more about us. So that kind of had me feeling a little bit, well, maybe that's kind of the, that's the door they're leaving open. You know, that's the, that's the escape hatch. If it goes wrong, like, hey, man, we're just worried about us. We didn't beat Notre Dame, but we got better. We feel good about ourselves moving forward. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how many people are going to buy that if it if it doesn't go if it goes totally sideways. But no, I'm all for, I'm all for it, man. Yeah, I'm not going there for just uh, you know let's let's have fun. Let's let's remember the way it was when we were we didn't have the pressure on us, man. When you know, remember the best game you ever had, man. When, when we were, you know when you're in high school sophomore year, just you know laid back, relax, having fun, man. Just, let's find that, man. Let's all find that and let's go and play the way we can play. You know, no, no, man. He was he was pissed Wednesday. He was mad. Yeah, good. Good. I mean, you got to start somewhere. You, yeah. you can't. You can't let mediocrity be what you ex- the expectation. And you can't. If you're a head coach that's worth your salt, you can't lower the expectation. Mike Norvell was embarrassed by that Miami game, even though he wasn't on the sideline. He was embarrassed by it. Um, let's hope he was embarrassed. Who? Let's hope he can. I don't know. Tra- transmit that embarrassment onto these players who apparently don't get all that upset about it. They they come to expect it. He doesn't. And as soon as he starts to be okay with it, you might have a real problem on your hands because you can't get accustomed to it, man. That the apathy towards being completely annihilated is is something that's been troubling here for a while. I was going to say also, Aslan, I was I was quicker than you would think. One time, actually, uh, back in college, uh, the four of us actually did a uh, full court press in in a pickup game. Let's go. Yeah, they were not expecting that. Uh, the guy was like, "Wait, are they pressing us?" And, uh, you know, we did it to try to change things up. It didn't end up working out for us. They got a couple of alley-oops. But still, we were trying. We tried something new, and it uh, didn't end up working out for us. It's all right, man. It's all right. You know, you are where you are now, where you belong. Uh, 
you know, talking Florida State. Did fans you ever play? Did you did you ever play pickup basketball? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So there's always like I was at Georgia Southern before I transferred to Georgia. We were at this church court with a bunch of kids that played on like the local high school team, and they were you know they were s talkers and cocky. And we come out there one day. S talkers. Well, I, I can't say. I know, you know, know. you know what I mean. Uh, this one guy in particular, I still remember his face. You can 25 say it if you years say ago. It. I'll, I'll bleep it. No, out no, if it's you all right. Say it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we go up to the court and we pick up this guy. There's only three of us, so we pick up this guy, and literally he's. Uh, and I don't want to make it racial, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say exactly what he looked like. He was about a five ten white guy with shaggy hair. Um, I think he might have been wearing a headband, but I don't know. But I do know that in between games he was smoking cigarettes. Nice. Uh, and he was just a f- nondescript, long haired, uh, white dude with a beard. With a beard. That's right. He also had a beard. And he was doing, I threw an alley oop to him thinking he'd go up and catch it for like a layup. He catches it and does like a tomahawk. And I'm like, oh my, what? And I like, I celebrated more than he did. He just ran down court. I did an airplane. I did like the airplane running around because, you know, obviously the people on the court, it, it, they stormed it after they saw that. Like it was, Let's it was go. like one of those things you see on YouTube. And so I started doing the airplane because I threw the pass and I'd never been on the e- either end of an alley oop, obviously. I don't play with those kind of athletes. So, uh, so you, it's just, I bet everybody that's played a lot of basketball in their lives pick up. They've got two or three stories like that where some dude is just unbelievable and you don't know what the story is. You just can't fathom how did, what, what happened here? That guy, what? And just to see the look on people's faces the first time he rose up on them was really fun. Anyway, back to Florida State football. When you were backpedaling to get back on defense, like did he give you the point? Like did he give you the shout out point like down the down the floor like hey man, good looking. Good looking. I think I think he said nice look, but again, the the court erupted. And again, yeah. I don't I wasn't on the court anymore. I wasn't running back on defense. I was doing the airplane <laughs> towards the parking lot. So, maybe after the after things calmed down, he said good look. I think we should sponsor this. I want to call it like Slon Slim Chance. Sort of like a uh you know, has nothing to do with football, is very loosely grounded in reality that we live in. But, hey, why not believe? You know, that's what you're here for. Everybody wants some belief. You know, Adam, belief. Like- I mean, you can hey, look crazier things than ha- have happened. Yeah. Not in Florida State football, probably, but other programs a- across the country in the last 45 years have pulled off monumental upsets. Almost all of them. I bet. Didn't you look up those point spreads yeah, that we were talking yeah, about yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So BYU was an eight and a half point favorite on Florida State. Okay. Boston College was favored by seven back in two thousand seven. What about and you couldn't find the ten Miami game? Ten Miami game. I think it was five and a half. Yeah, Miami. I was going to say there's no way it was huge. No. Florida State might be the one program in the country, legitimately, might be the one program in the country that has not pulled off an enormous upset in the last forty years. If you think about it, like all the teams that are good now that have been good for a while, Clemson. Uh, Clemson upset uh, Florida State back in, I don't know, was it 01, 03? 2003, yeah. Yeah, so Clemson has pulled off upsets. Obviously, all the all the never was is the Virginias uh, and, uh, and the schools like that have had upsets over the years. But Alabama was bad for a time. I'm sure they pulled off an upset or two. Georgia's pulled off some upsets. Auburn, USC. But has Florida State might be the only team in the country in the last 40 years that hasn't won a game when it was a two-touchdown underdog or even a 10-point underdog. So, now's the time, guys. Now's the time. Yeah, let me double-check the mic. The, the, it's oddshark.com. I don't know if I should give them a shout-out. They do have a historical database. But the only thing that makes me feel a little bit dubious is that it shows like what the home spread was. It says 2012, like we were favored by 21? That sounds ridiculous. O- over who? Miami. No, 2013 maybe. 2013 20. says 21 and a half. Yeah, tw- there's no way in 2012 Florida State was a 21 point favorite going down there. There's zero chance. I'm saying it says yeah, five and a half is what it says on the uh, 2010 game. Okay, so yeah, hey, Florida State. This could be something none of us have ever felt. We've never felt Florida State. We felt it in basketball, um, and you felt it probably with your pro sports teams, but you've never felt your college football team being a huge underdog. Again, there haven't been many chances. It's a small sample size. But they've been you know, coming here quickly the last few years. But you've never seen your team as a decided underdog, like a big underdog, go out and play well and win a game. I'm just trying to also, I want to look up Oklahoma real quick. That because that 2011 game was magical for a little bit. Eh, we're only four point dog. Yeah, 
It was, you know, it was in our house, I guess. So it was a good spread. It was a good line too. Yeah. Like if EJ doesn't get hurt, maybe they end up winning that game. Yeah. What I was thinking again, this is like the slon, slon, slim chance, 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 chance. I don't know whatever happened to the the, the, the war chance don't go lock. That was good that you had on during the Miami game. You <laughs> joked about, but you guys didn't do it this past week. You didn't even make a pick on the Notre Dame game. What I what I did wonder was again, this is like a really this just gives you you know I'm just throwing some some kind of crumbs at folks. I bet you Adam Fuller, you know, growing up in the uh, in New England, if you like college football, I bet you somebody in his family really, really, really liked Notre Dame. I bet you watched a good deal of Notre Dame growing up. He's playing in Notre Dame. His team, his guys, they're going to battle in Notre Dame Stadium, thinking maybe bring something special. Maybe he's got something for the guys. Maybe something, you know. Maybe play, uh, yeah, play a little yeah. up, a little closer up on the line of scrimmage. Maybe. Hey, I mean that could be something, you know? but I, I don't know that it's going to really. Uh... I don't know that he grew up a huge Notre Dame fan. You know, he was probably – he hey probably man, grew up at Alumni grew up Stadium. In, if you grew up in Massachusetts or New Hampshire and you liked football, you probably liked Notre Dame. He was all – he was at those Harvard-Yale games. He was he was probably a big Sacred Flutie Heart, fan. Big Sacred Heart guy. Yeah, he or a Flutie fan for BC. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think he was th- – that's where – that's what really gets him uh, when he when he starts thinking back to his childhood. It's those, it's those glorious Boston College teams from the – Mid '80s that everybody remembers. I should have asked uh, on uh, Tuesday, but it totally or Monday, but it totally slipped my mind. I'll try to get better, uh, everybody. Maybe I'll, I will. Maybe ask some of these players after the game, just if the if the message, if the approach was any different uh, that night than it was two years ago when they played Notre Dame in '18. Maybe they'll maybe they'll give us some insight on my whole theory about playing loose or playing to actually go out there and you know give it 110 percent, see what happens. By the way, it was Marnell 55 who was uh, finally. First time long while excited to watch the Knowles play again. He also won one of the T-shirts. So, All right, good. Congratulations, right, go. Marnold. Yeah. Uh, back to the questions. Uh, I think we got about four of them, and then we'll uh, uncork the over-unders, and we'll all go on and have a great weekend. Knowles 6, wake up. Hey, guys, just thinking about our chances on offense. Notre Dame has a nice defense. With our emerging run game in the spotlight this week, Notre Dame will be ready for it and look to stack the box. I think it would be a great idea to get our receivers and backs out wide for quick burst plays. Get the defense stretched out, possibly tired, relatively quick. We have to trade scoring opportunities, obviously. Our defense cannot keep up with their offense. That's my input. What do you guys think is our best chance on success? And for the love of all things, Bowden, can Fuller have our guys jam the receivers at the line to disrupt their routes? I'm not, you know, that's that's Corey's account, the whole jam. I, I know Again, what you're talking about, too, not, man. Hey, you can not, play. I'm, can I'm you not ma- saying it's like isn't it kind of like fielding a a, a a fly ball almost like if you make your first step forward and you misread it like you're totally screwed like you're gonna start backtracking trying to catch a, a fly ball and then you, you, you everything's out, out the window like I mean, if you're gonna play six yards off the ball then your first step is gonna be like a jab like a, a jab step forward hey man if that's not if that's not a, a square and if that's not a quick out and the guy's going downfield like ten yards you're you're toast. I mean, then you can play like that and get and give up fifty two like you did to Miami. Like, All right. you know what I mean? Like you, the the one the one drive that uh, Georgia Tech had late or two of the drives that they had late in the game. Asante Samuel's too good to be giving up eleven yard completions that easily to a freshman quarterback. It was just too easy a throw. And when you bring pressure, and they don't bring pressure a ton, but when they do, you can't just let guys be wide open because that's the hot that's the hot route hot, hot route. route. That's the that's the target they're looking for on a blitz. And how do the how do the uh, how do the uh, oh, I forgot what you call them? Not the out routes. The uh, when Square you get blitz. Limit. No, when you get blitz and you have the and you Sight throw it adjustment. to the guy. This, yeah, sure, but that's not what I mean. But I, I my mind's gone. I'm old, folks. But the guy that he's supposed to throw to when he gets blitzed, or one of the easy throws, the dump off when he gets blitzed, they can't be that wide open. They just can't. And I'm not just talking about. Because I'm not, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not advocating that Asante and Akeem Dent or Asante and Miko Dotson are playing like Buckley and Dion the whole game, up in their faces, jamming them at the line the whole time. You just can't give up easy th- foods here. You just can't give up easy throws. Just quit giving up such easy throws. That's all. Did you want to grab your food or are we still rolling? No, we're still rolling, buddy. We're all still right. rolling. Very well. All right. Stephanie got it. Um, yeah, you know, maybe these swing passes, again, the, uh, the running backs involved in the pass game, that'll kind of uh, soften things up. That's a, that's a good thing that uh, was working. It's been working in most of these games they've played as uh, these guys coming out the backfield. Don't so. you want to just see them make good throws, the, the Notre Dame? Like, to beat Florida State, you have to make good throws, not 
middle school throws, but actual good throws, because these are good quarterbacks, and it's going to happen. Make them earn it. Don't let them do to you what Bry Bryce Perkins, right, Virginia quarterback? Correct. Don't let them do to you what that kid did to you last year. You just gave him middle school throws, and because he's an athlete that's on scholarship that has an arm that works, he could get he could hoist the ball airborne to the dude that was eight yards in front of him wide open, and he did it for three straight drives, and you lost the game. Just make them make it harder. Just make it harder. They, they might end up still getting there, but make it harder. You know, a death by a thousand paper cuts is still death. Make it harder. Speaking of Notre Dame, apparently two of their defensive starters, a defensive lineman and a linebacker, are likely out uh, due to COVID. So, Okay. All right. Hey, the, you want to know how you beat Notre Dame? COVID might be on your side, too. Okay. Actually, maybe, maybe you get one starter. But still, oh, though. Well, you had us, you had us thinking. Maybe, if it was seven starters, you'd be on to something. All right. Well, you know. Still some time. Still some time left, you know. The, uh, That's right. The lead time on this can be a little uh, tricky. Uh, Warpath Knoll, he's uh, from Washington, D.C. I need to pull this up. It was it was very clever. Well, not very clever, but you know, he got back to me. I asked him. I think it was the first time he's ever posted on the show. So I'm like, hey, man, we need to know where you're from and some of the famous people. He's actually from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., uh, where it's home to, and I'm trying to, why is my inner, Comcast? Come on. Seriously, Comcast. It's not my fault, it's Comcast. It won't pull up, but he, I know he said Dave Chappelle. I was going to say, Chappelle's from D.C. Yeah. Um, I, you know, he had a bunch of good people. I'm like, oh, and it was good because he, he didn't name any, like, politicians. He named everybody besides a politician. But, right. uh, yeah, Comcast is going to Comcast. Luckily, though, I have my, uh, uh, other computer pulled up with a question so I can get to his question. Hey, guys, I got two questions and a suggestion or a request. Who is your favorite player currently on the team? <laughs> Robert Scott. I like him, man. He's a good interview. He's on my all-time interview team. I like Robert Scott. Yeah, that's uh, like as a – I don't know. That's a, that's a weird one. I like um... – you know, I like watching Asante play. I know I give him some grief, but he's good. Um, it's fun to watch good football players. Um, I don't know. I, I Cam McDonald. Okay. I Corey, like him a lot. Corey, have you retired to Maureen Terry's Hall of Fame jacket? No. It's still being embroidered. Yep. The, uh, guy is, the guy is about to take off over these next nine games, and, yes, I'm including the bowl game. Um Yes, well, he might not play in the bowl game though. After the eight games, the eight game run he's about to go on, he's not going to need to play in a bowl game. Not going to need to. Might not even need to play in the Duke game at the too end of the year. Tape. Too much uh, tape. Too much. Yeah, they don't want. They only want so much. They too much they can handle. They don't want to look at all of it. Um, I, I would think. Uh, I would think he's going to have a, a good couple months here. I'm not putting all the the blame of the Miami game, especially in, on his shoulders, or the Georgia Tech game. I, except you got to catch that ball, man. But other than that. I thought he played. I thought he played well the last week, and I expect him to play play well this week. It's just you know how many. I don't know how many opportunities he's going to get. We'll see. Another thing, you know, speaking of tape, I will say this though. I don't know why they keep throwing him the the uh, the wide receiver screens. That doesn't seem to be his bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got other guys like Helton and Pokey. Um, I don't know if Jordan Young could do it. You've got Corey Wren. You've got Toa Feely. Those are the guys I would throw that pass. That, that, the one they threw to him to start the game with Rodebaker, I know you want to get the ball into your best player's hands, but Terry catching the ball at the line of scrimmage stopped completely. Um, that's not really utilizing his strength. He's not, a, he's not a Peter Warwick. Yeah. He's not a guy that's going to make – he's not, not going to break ankles. Yeah, he's not going to put four people on the ground as he's shaking them out of their shoes. He's not that kind of dude. And also, he, he, hopefully that was, the, that was him telling them maybe he doesn't want, you to call, he doesn't want them to call that play anymore. Because that was awful. It was a, that was it was not he did not do a good job there. I thought he played a really good game the rest of the way, but that was not a good start. Speaking of tape, uh, okay. another thing I think that might be mildly encouraging. You know, just if, if you want something to believe in, everybody, I'm just, you know, to sprinkle in every now and then, every five ten minutes. You know, like Marvin and Kane, though, you know, you can you can do something good against NC State. You can have a two sack game. You may force a fumble against Louisville. I just do wonder how much. Stock scouts and teams will put in when they look at your schedule and they're like, "Hey, man, how come? Can we can we pull up some from the from the Miami game? Can we pull up some from the Notre Dame game?" It's another thing too, man. It's like this opportunity. This is like if you have a really good game here, you put your name into conversations that can affect your your earning power, your earning potential. They realize that. 
Adam Fuller realizes that. It's his, it's his favorite team. It's his childhood team, Corey. It's all coming I, together. I think you're making a, a, a pretty weird leap there. Massachusetts isn't very close to Indiana. I, I don't know. I mean, I get like the people in the in the Come on, Rust his whole belt. family's Irish Catholic, I bet you. Come on, man. Work with okay. me here, man. All right. Okay. Work with I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Warpath Noel, especially since you guys have so many direct fan interactions each week, how about each week you choose one fan question, nothing crazy, to ask Norvell? I was, I was going to ask him about the Tomahawks within Gene Williams, uh, a.k.a. Dot com. The Don, he asked it, and I was going to preface it with, hey, uh, this is a question for the, from the people. Uh, they want to know what's up with the Tomahawks. Where are they at on the helmets? Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. If it's not going to be a crazy question, then what's the point of asking? If it's going to be, like, hey, coach, what's, uh, I don't know, like, uh, where's Corey Wren? I guess maybe people, people want to know that. Maybe we can ask that. But maybe somebody want if it's, uh, like, I don't. I think that's not a bad idea. I mean, literally, we get him more than we've ever gotten any coach ever. So we, you do run out of questions eventually. Yeah. So if somebody asks a question about like, uh, you know, I don't know, what was the first college football game he saw in person? Oh, not. We can't ask him that. Sure, you can. What, are we going to ask him more about why the defense doesn't cover anyone? And gives up a bunch of points. You could ask him stuff that's a little bit personal. I would. I would. I would be all. I would be a little bit on board with that. I mean, that's not what you lead with. But 35 questions into the week. Well, maybe if you have, like, Brady around and you put Brady on the Zoom, he's like, hey, Coach Norvell, my name is no, Brady No, no, no. See, now that's unprofessional. We could ask it in a way where it still seems like it's one of our questions. Like, think of something you want to know about Norvell that isn't necessarily football-related or is football-related, but it's not necessarily, um, hey, can you talk about the health of Darius Washington? When is Shubba Purdy going to start? That's all I care there about. There you go. Hey. Sure. Okay. I, don't care about, man. I know. I, don't I know, care buddy. About. Drummer Noel, 1201. Corey Aslan, wake up. Apologies for the extra long post last week. I'll keep it short this week. My question is which assistant coach has made their presence most felt on game days this year? Might be an easy answer, but I would love to know how you think this coach's hard work will project out by the Duke game, assuming the position group does not get stung by injury, of course. Side note, Corey, will you bless us with a wake up if we pull off the upset on the road at Notre Dame? Stay safe. Keep eating Zaxby's. Go Knowles. Not only would I bless you with that, I would start the show with that every day for a month. Uh, for the For the rest of October, I would say. Right. Every show, we start with me saying that. Let's go! I mean, come on. I might as well say... Put it on the bulletin board. Let them I, know, everybody. I, you know, I, and I'll also climb up a rainbow and find you a pot of gold you can give to a leprechaun. It might happen though, guys. Like Why I said, are you being this way, I don't Stop know. It. I'm just, I, you know, I get you get closer to the game. You start, you start becoming more of a realist. It's the Atlanta sports fan in me. Um, but yes, there is a chance. They're not a hundred point underdogs. There is a chance they can pull this thing off. Um, and if they do, my crow that I have to eat is that I have to say wake up every show for the rest of October. It's a rusty team. They haven't played in several weeks. We don't know if there's. Maybe there's some trust issues within the program right now. Maybe there's, you know, some people or maybe there's a little Warren Thompson percolating over in, in South okay. Bend right now. Like okay. DJ Matthews percolating over there. Like, hey, can we trust you? Can I trust you? What do you do? You got you gave it to me. You gave it to him. I mean, come on, man. They, they, it was Duke. It was Duke in South, in South Florida. The first question I would say uh, right off the right off the bat, I would to me, it's been uh, at John Papuchas. Oh, Oh, you're going to say Papuchas. I was yeah, just Papu about, yeah no. special teams special have been good. Been good. No, I, was, I was joking about defensive ends. Oh, well. Yeah, but anyway, it's yeah. Atkins. You're right, of course. But the special teams have been good. Um, I, don't, I haven't looked to see where they're ranked in the country. It really doesn't matter until another month probably. But uh, they've been good. Uh, not great the last two weeks, but, you know, they can't control if a kid misses a kick. Uh, everything else they can control. Um, it'd also be nice if uh, Mastro started hitting some bombs again. Uh, let's see how he handles Notre Dame. He, hey, he doesn't know anything about Notre Dame. That guy doesn't. I, I guarantee you, he hasn't watched Rudy. He doesn't know who Tim Brown was. He doesn't. In, he doesn't even know who Manti Te'o is, much less the the whole girlfriend thing. So he shouldn't be over. He's going to be like, what? Why is Jesus doing that? What's the what's that pose about? He's not going to know. He's not going to know about the game of the century. None of that stuff. So he shouldn't be nervous at all going into that game. Florida State 50th graded out. Uh, they're 50th uh, in the nation on pass rush out of 74 teams. 
according to okay. pro football focus. All right. But, yeah, Alex Atkins, man, the offensive line. Uh, again, listen, I know they didn't look great against Georgia Tech or Northern Miami, uh, but what they did against Jacksonville State, say what you will, level of competition, but the fact that you broke in several – new faces, kind of in new spots. You think Dante comes back. Dante's going to be a little – I think he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. I think we're going to see a real good, strong game out of Dante. Uh, we both like Maurice Smith. Devontae Love-Taylor has been solid through three games. Uh, you know, Robert Scott getting a little better, a little stronger, hopefully. So, yeah, that, that unit, I think, come November, uh, we'll, we'll definitely like what we see from them. And, uh, yeah, it's clearly to me he's he's been the, the star hire uh, for Norvell. Yeah, but we also – that does not mean we expect them to be uh, road graders on Saturday night. Yeah, just – Just you know, don't be – don't be pummeled for four quarters. Yeah, just when we get those – let's not get in second and long because we have a, you know, false start on, you know, second and six. Or you just let a dude run free and yeah, Travis true. or the running back has no chance and it's a six-yard loss. Try to limit those. We haven't seen that, have we? I know. No, we haven't. Yeah. I know. So we haven't seen it much at all. We, You know, Cam Akers was dodging dudes in the backfield all of the last two years. That yeah. You haven't had to see running backs doing that nearly as much. Yeah, yeah we, like, we like Atkins. All right, last one, and then we'll get to the over-unders. Mississippi underscore Noel underscore 357. Wake up. What's good, Corey and Aslan? An upset, not impossible, but it doesn't seem as if anyone is expecting that. I would love to see progress. Game four should not look like game one. There should be steady improvement, and hopefully midseason you have a pretty decent product on the field. I think that's what recruits and fans want to see during a rebuild. So if we come out competitive and keep it semi-close, I'm okay with that. Keep up the great work. Hashtag go Knowles, Hashtag chop on. All right, so not even a question, just sentiment. I think most people are in that boat, right? Like, I don't think most of the people listen to this, or I don't think any, hopefully none of them, nobody's expecting a win. Um, <laughs> but I think but I, but I think some people are hoping hoping for a win, but more than anything, you just hope that they, they show the progress, they don't get embarrassed, they keep it close, and it's something to build on. I think Florida State fans, through, through no fault of their own, have had to shift completely shift the way they watch football games and the way they think about college football seasons here in this little dip. It's not a, it's not a little dip. It's a big dip. Um, but, yeah, so I, I think everybody is going in with the right mindset that, okay, let's see what this looks like. Let's take some positive steps. Let's not let it look like it did two years ago. Let's get a, you know, force a couple punts. Don't get emasculated in the running game. Make some stops. Make some plays on offense. That would be nice to see, right? Yeah. Another thing, too, man, three games in a row they played. Three weeks in a row. You know, none of this weird, let's play a game, let's have a week off, let's then go play yeah. uh, a well-oiled right. machine and then, you know, jump back down an FCS team and now they got to go play one of the top five teams in the nation. So that's going to be a huge sort of, uh, you know, leap up in competition. But, again, man, I just think Notre Dame, I mean, they're, they can, you know, uh, script out everything they want. I just think, man, three weeks of them not playing, there's going to be a little bit of rust. And if you can – you know, get out of the first quarter and be up by three. Maybe only be down by three. And then, you know, drag them to the deep water. See what they feel like after That's that. That's right, buddy. That's so, right. I like it. Hey, I like it. I'm feeling it. All right, man, let's get to the uh, over-under, courtesy of the Williams Sportsbook. Coldest beers, biggest, brightest televisions in town. Uh, up-to-date standings, your boy, that would be me, uh, plus three on Corey thus far. Oh, boy. Uh, we've agreed on pretty much everything. Uh, so I, I feel like we've only disagreed on, like, three things. And yeah, I've been wrong, come. and you've been right every time? Eh, no. Maybe. Right. I don't know. It's a good question. I, haven't, I should. First time we did it last year, I'd, I'd, I'd have every single week each single pick saved in a journal, but now I just write down the weekly pick on my desk, oh, okay. and then I race right. it afterwards. Last week, what we didn't agree on was Warren Thompson's over under two and a half catches. I went under, you went over, and then – Marvin Wilson's pro football focus grade. I took the under, you took the over, and he okay. graded out under 80, whatever. So, with that said, good lines. Oh, this first one. Jordan Travis, rushing yards, Corey Clark, 52, over, under. As everyone knows in college football, because of a dumb rule, sack yardage gets counted as rushing yardage. So, he might rush for 70, but be sacked for 20 yards of loss, and he rushed for 50 yards, technically. Um, I am still going to say... Hmm. I'm going to say over. I'm going to say over. Okay. I don't feel great about it, but I'm going to say over. I'm going to say under. Yeah, so. you're probably right. I didn't want to go over there, uh, but I don't know. Like, 
if it's over, is that a good? I don't know. I, I, I was just, I'm trying to like pick my brain for like what's the one stat other than the score, obviously. I, I just predict I don't think he's going to run wild against them. I don't think he's going to have like a bunch of first down carries. I do think there's a chance he could bust one, though, like a 30 or 40 yard run. And then after that, you just have a few three, three or four yard runs. FSU sacks on Ian Book. Under. One half. Under. You don't think you're going to get one singular sack on him. Yeah. I, mean, I I said under before you gave me the – I did not know he was going to go a half. That's a great line. Um, you know what? If uh, I thought he'd say one and a half. Uh, I'm going to say over. All right. Now, just on Ian Book, so, like, what if Ian Book gets sprains his ankle in the, the second series and they right. sack the backup? Well, that's what I the, feel like that should count. Well, William Sportsbook says Ian Book, so I think it's Ian Book only. All right. What are you going <sighs> mean, to say there? Yeah, I'm going to go over. I mean, come on. You got to get one, one. I yeah, mean, you it, don't have to. <laughs> Adam Fuller, childhood team, set in his kitchen <laughs> sink. <laughs> Longest run by a Florida State running back, 15 and a half yards. Over. Look at you. Maybe I'm feeling more bullish on the Knowles than I thought. Wait till we get to that final one. I'm with you. I'm with you as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you pop off a run of over 15. Toa Feely ain't afraid. No, oh, man. Jay Sean ain't afraid. LaDamian Webb ain't afraid. This ain't Duke, boys. It's not Duke. It's not yeah, this ain't Cutcliffe. South Florida, guys. It's the, these are real athletes. Pokey Wilson catches four and a half. Under. He had seven last yeah. week. Um, and yeah, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what's going on with Warren Thompson. Not that I should really like let Warren Thompson affect what I think about this, but still though, that's just another body out there catching a pass, man. If pokey catches like six balls, four and a half though. Mm. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm gonna take the under. All right. Hey man, when you're right, you're right. Devontae love Taylor pro football focus pass blocking grade 76 and a half. Under. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny. It's just uh, just you not even having to ponder anything. It's just like, yeah, I know what's going on here. I'm trying to pull up his grade here just so we have something to maybe have a point of reference on. I mean, but, he did well against Miami, right? Yeah, yeah. He usually does good against Miami. But again. That's right. He owns those guys. Um, you know, I have. Maybe this is his childhood team. It's probably as much his childhood favorite team as it is Adam Fuller's. Yeah, Comcast is still doing Comcast things. You said under or over on that? I said under. Okay. Um, I'll go over. Okay, go DLT. Over. Show them what's up, DLT. I'll go over. All right, here we go. Total points scored. This is the official number. 52 points. Under. Ooh, I'm going over. I'm going over. I mean, it's a 21-point game. What do you think, a 30, like, 35-7? Thinking 28-27. Uh, Knowles go for two at the end and get it. Um, no, that would be under then, wouldn't it? Or that'd be over. Um, I'm thinking something like 30, 38. To, I, it, it doesn't matter what I'm thinking, Aslan. The Knowles can go and do it. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you how I got to the number and what I think the total is. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say under. Okay. I'm going over. I mean, if it's a 21-point oh, right. spread... So what are you thinking, like 42 to 21, something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that, yeah. God, I don't go up there and give up 42 points to Notre Dame. What did they score against Duke? Well, I shouldn't – I can't ask you. You can't look anything up. <laughs> but I, I know it was pretty cl- – it was like – I, I think feel like it was 14 it, to 13. 27-13. Yeah, man, come on. You know, like, I mean, I know – just come on. first game of the year, though. But, again, they played South they Florida and they've played, been off And for then like they haven't played weeks. forever. Yeah. So, come on, man. There's no excuse to give up 42 points to that team. Coach them up, play hard, coach hard, get some turnovers, and make your fans proud. Knowles, I know you're all listening to this. You're listening to this on the flight up there. Make yourself – make your play hard. Force some fumbles. Have you done that this year? Get a couple picks. Let's go. Force a punt. Force a few punts. Don't give up 42 points to Notre Dame. Tell you, Notre Dame, don't let, don't, let us, don't let this team get a spark. I mean, I'm being serious. Like, if – again, with the layoff – if Florida State, let's say they, they script out their first drive, and let's say they get a touchdown on their first drive, and then Notre Dame turns it over, 
and then you got a short field. You know, maybe you get another touchdown. Don't 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 fall into that hole, Notre Dame. For real. Don't fall you don't, into you it. Want it. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. You don't want to let the – don't give this Florida State team life. It's a new day. Step on their, step on their necks like everybody else does. It's a new but day. It, it is a new day, and I, do, and I do think that it mattered that Norvell wasn't there for the Miami game. I don't think it mattered by 42 points, but I do think it mattered. The whole game had a goofy, weird feel. So um, uh, it, I do think it will matter. I think hopefully they learned something from that game. Hopefully they were embarrassed by it. Hopefully what they did – in the, in the final three quarters or two and a half quarters against Jacksonville State, carries over, and they play with some belief because they have a new quarterback, and hopefully the defense can make some plays. We know they're not going to shut them out. We know they're not going to hold them under 20 points, but make some plays, keep it close, and make them have to go make plays in the fourth quarter to beat you. Just quit giving teams wins in the second quarter, which is what's happened too many times. Make them go out to play a full four quarters, and then see where the, see where the chips fall. You know what I'm saying, Aslan? That's my, that's my, uh, um, you know, that was my inspirational talk. That was my new Rockney right there. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm Duke. I'm Duke uh, in Rocky Four between like the second and third round. No, like before the last round, when he looks at Rocky, he's like, "It's your whole Throw life." Throwing the here. damn towel. No, oh, I thought- <laughs> no, not that. <laughs> Wait, is this your whole life here? Is this your whole life here, Marvin Wilson? Josh Kando, I need film. Up on a round table. That's not even round. Being puppeted by the governor of the state to get football up and running. I need to. Pl- I need to play. I need tape. Here you go. Make some tape. Make some highlights. Make some plays. Hurt Ian Book. Hurt his feelings. Tomorrow and Terry, you too. We're Corey Dern, you too. Go make plays. You guys could have gone to Notre Dame. You're good enough to play at Notre Dame. Some of you. Go show them. Your fathers, like literally your fathers. You have children. You need to put food on the table. Go out there yeah. and eat. Go out there and eat. You tell them, Aslan. You tell them. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We do appreciate it. I think it's going to be a really fun show on Monday. So I uh, hope you'll join us then. For Corey Maslon, thanks for listening to Wake Up War Chant. Probably presented by Zaxby's. Indescribably good. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.